Hey there YouTube and welcome to the first video in a series that I'm calling DIY Home Automation for Beginners. In this series I'm going to answer the question of what is home automation and what can you do with home automation. I'm also going to show you how to actually build a device from scratch, set up a smart home hub and connect them so that you have the fundamentals to automate anything in your home that you want. What I'm going to go over in today's video are the basic building blocks of home automation. I'm also going to explain the basic concepts of what you can do with home automation. And finally, I'm going to give you a rough glossary of terms that you're going to need to understand to get the most out of the next few videos. So let's get started. To begin with, I'm going to talk about the building blocks of home automation. The first thing that you're going to need are the things that you want to automate. The most common in today's market are things like the Nest thermostat or a smart light bulb or a smart switch, but you're really only limited by your imagination as to what you can actually automate. So the next thing I want to talk about are sensors. So there are sensors in the things that we were just talking about. I mean, the Nest thermostat has a temperature and humidity sensor in it, and even the switches have sensors in the form of switches or buttons. But there's all kinds of sensors out there that you can use, whether it's a soil moisture sensor or a reed switch in your door that tells you whether it's open or closed, or an ultrasonic sensor that tells you how close or far something is from that sensor. And you can use all of that data to feed into your network to determine and orchestrate events with the smart things that you're controlling. And speaking about orchestration, that gets into the third sort of thing that I want to talk about, which is a smart hub. And a smart hub is something that takes in all that sensor data and can control your smart things. And so it can make decisions for you, which we can call automation or orchestration, and say, if I see rain in the forecast tomorrow, don't turn on my irrigation today. Or when the sun goes down or when the sun sets, turn my front porch light on. Or when I pull into my garage and the sensor can tell that I've parked and it's after dark, turn a light on inside my house for me. So these are all the sort of things that you can start to orchestrate on your smart hub. So how does this all work? Well, the first is thing to controller communication and it, and it communicates directly. And so the thing is actually running some sort of web server on it. And then the controller is running like your phone is running an app that communicates directly to that thing. And <clears throat> this is the most simple setup, but obviously then that thing isn't communicating with any you know, other sensors or any way to orchestrate things together. And so the next way is actually the most common in today's market, and that's thing to cloud to controller. And so when you first set up a thing, you generally use your phone with an app to connect it to the cloud. And then the thing listens to the cloud for a signal. So when you use the app on your phone, it's actually sending a signal to the cloud and the device is listening to that and reacts accordingly. So if you push turn my light on on your phone, it's actually sending the signal out to wherever that server is and the device is listening, your light bulb is listening to where that server is and when it sees that the server has changed its status, then it turns on. So the third paradigm is actually running that server in your own house. So you can set up a smart hub in your own home that runs on a small computer or your desktop and handles all of the orchestration for you locally. Now the reason that the second paradigm is the most common is because that it doesn't require you to have any additional items in your house. Some of the early home automation systems required having some sort of smart hub and they just didn't take off because you had to invest so much in the smart hub and then you had to get all the, the individual devices on top of it. Well, now you can run your own smart hub on you know, a computer that costs very little like a Raspberry Pi or you can run it on your own desktop and you don't have to worry about that large additional overhead of buying some sort of you know expensive smart hub. So what are the common pitfalls with these? Well, if your internet goes out, then obviously you're going to lose connection to anything that's running on that, you know, cloud communication channel only. 
Um, whereas if you're running it on a smart hub, you'll still be able to control your devices within your internal network unless your network goes down. Now, if your network goes down, this is where it's important to have some sort of actual physical switch or button that you can use. You know, if a Nest thermostat loses functionality or loses internet connection, it still works on its own. If a sawn off smart switch loses internet connection, you can still push the button on there and it's going to toggle that switch for you. But if you have something hidden away behind a couch, like a smart socket, things can get a little bit tricky and you have to keep that in mind when you're setting your network up as to, you know, what are critical items and do you how and do you really want to hide that switch somewhere where you can't get to it? Or if you're building a device, you probably want to build an actual switch into the device so that if you do lose internet connection, you can still turn it on and off. So that brings me to my solution and the section which is the glossary for the terms you're going to want to understand for the series. And the first is going to be Home Assistant. So Home Assistant is an open source smart hub. You can run it on either your desktop computer or small inexpensive computer like a Raspberry Pi. I have mine running on a Raspberry Pi because I need to run it all the time and sometimes I turn my computer off. The next thing that you're going to hear me talk a lot about is Tasmoda. Tasmoda is a firmware that you can install on a lot of smart switches and uh, smart lights and smart this is and smart that's as well as you can install it right on uh, ESP8266 breakout board and it facilitates the communication between your smart device and home assistant they communicate over a protocol called MQTT which is another term you'll hear thrown around a lot and it's just a lightweight communication protocol that these devices can use to communicate with each other over a regular TCP IP uh, wireless network. One of the commercial devices that I use a lot is a Sonoff switch. And Sonoff switches are basically just mains power in a smart controller that actually runs, uh, you know, the ESP8266 architecture, so I can put Tasmoda on it. And then it has a relay that controls whether or not that power gets turned on or off to whatever I'm connecting it to. So if I make a lamp or something that runs off of mains power, I'm probably going to use a sawn off because by the time you buy all the components you would need to build that, it's cheaper to use the sawn off. And you've heard me say it a couple of times now, the ESP8266. So if you're curious about what an ESP8266 is, it's a Wi-Fi uh, system on a chip and I have a whole video about it that I'll link in the description below. And so that brings us to the end of the first video in the series. If this answered some questions for you that you've had about home automation, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're curious and want to follow along, hit that subscribe button and follow me through as we explore home automation and set up some really cool stuff together. I hope to see you in the next video. As always, happy hacking.